Here's a look at dishes that left the judges utterly speechless, with this one setting a new standard for shocking moments. Yeah, I'm talking about Claudia Sandoval, one of the most well-deserving winners of MasterChef. What really set her apart from the rest was her versatility. She could handle any cuisine without batting an eyelid, although Mexican cuisine was her forte. It's fragrance. That's nice. It's sort of perfumed. Delicious. Flan. But, well, aside from all the culinary whiz, Claudia had a funny side to her as well. Great emotions, and there's even tears. Crocodile tears. Even from a judge like yours truly. While most of her time on the show was remarkable, the finale kicked off at a whole new level. Claudia made some tamales with Mexican truffles, and believe me, they were totally out of this world. Claudia was certain that she'd knocked it out of the park. She was so moved by the flavor that she couldn't even get a grip of her emotions. And hey, she had a good reason to react like that. Because here's a quick look at Chef Ramsay's reaction to her dish. Tasting your own food and then crying. <laughs> wow, that's a first. The wheat la coche tamale with cactus salsa, avocado crema, and chicharron was a sight to behold. A cactus salsa finished off with an avocado and a crispy pork chicharron. It was exactly what the judges expected. Simple, yet elevated. All three judges couldn't stop raving about the dish. While Ramsay was all about its appearance, Graham loved the balance and flavor, and Christina, well, she was completely sold on the dish. Anyway, with that, Claudia then moved on to the entrees, and this time, she served a swordfish with Mexican squash and chickpeas. Grilled swordfish served over sauteed chayote and fresh chickpeas and Mexican squash on top. Now, the competition was getting tough, as Derek had plated a wonderful dish of his own. But Claudia's was no less good. Root vegetables, a huckleberry sauce, and a puff pastry cage. Going by the looks of it, Chef Ramsay started to worry if the dish was dry, but, well, here's a look at how things went. That vibrant, I want more of it. This is your most accomplished dish that you've ever cooked in this competition. However, the dessert round took a dramatic turn for Claudia. Mochawa. Water splashed inside when I moved the tray. Uh. This is like worst case. Yeah, sadly, due to a little slip up, she had to start working on her flame molds all over again. Meanwhile, over on the other side, Derek was dealing with his own mess. When it was time for judgment, Claudia presented a hibiscus poached pear dish. And it is 100% all about the pear. They're tender. And, well, I think you have a fair idea of how the season ended. Claudia! <laughs> See, Claudia's culinary journey had its ups and downs, but in the end, she delivered on all fronts. Today, Claudia is running her own catering and consulting company, all the while looking after her precious daughter like a queen. But here comes another contestant who has received mixed opinions from the judges and viewers alike. I'm talking about Subha. More specifically, when a chicken and sausage jambalaya was presented to judges. Now, this dude was pretty confident in himself. Gorgeous. Are you nervous at all? I'm making Cajun dish and I'm an Indian. That's what I'm nervous about. But let's see what the judges have to say. Oh boy. Wow. Well, I guess wow is the word of the day. But the story isn't over yet. Chef Ramsay had a surprise up his sleeve that was both jaw-dropping and heartwarming. Would you yes, mind? I'll yes, help you in. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Chef Ramsay brought in Suba's own mom to dish out the final judgments. And I'm sure Suba never expected that to happen. So, with a jambalaya, you okay? Oh, this is so special. Now, he might have run into some troubles much later on the show, but hey, during the auditions, the dude totally earned that apron. Now, let's move on to the ultimate street food showdown. Well, come feast your eyes on this mouthwatering masterpiece, a fried chicken burger with duck fat potatoes. What did you cook? A fried chicken burger with some mayo, um, a coleslaw, and a light pickle. When it was time for the tasting, the judge's reaction was totally unexpected. All oh, good, tasty, crunchy. It's got the textures to it. So what about the other judges? Well, sounds like everyone was taken with the dish. Is it tasty? Yeah, absolutely. Is the chicken crunchy? Yes, absolutely. Well, you have to agree, that did look delicious. But you know what? This reminds me of Sashi Chelia, the culinary wizard who owned MasterChef Australia 2018 with his amazing dishes. When it comes to him, you already know we're in for a treat. I mean, do you remember the time when he presented this? The biggest concern is making sure the chicken is cooked. Wow, talk about the perfect dish. But here's the kicker, would he be able to pull it off in time? The time was ticking, and it was only a matter of time until he could get that chicken on the table. I just hope that this chicken works out. I don't have the time to check whether my chicken is cooked. And what do you know? He totally nailed it. And here's a look at how the judges reacted. Here we go. 10 seconds. 9. 
fan, you blame them. This dish was cooked perfectly, and the compliments kept rolling in favor of the dish. It's just absolutely perfect. The balance is spot on. What's more, people flooded the comments section with praise and complimenting his quick thinking. Just like this viewer here who said Sashi managed to efficiently improvise, adapt, and overcome to beat the odds. I like how Sashi thought of a solution when the breast was undercooked. He pulled off the mindset of improvise, overcome, and adapt. Sashi had truly poured his heart and soul into that dish, and the result was pure magic. But now, we've got Elizabeth in the kitchen. And let me tell you, the judges' reactions to what she was making were on a completely different level. And look no further than her breakfast lasagna served alongside an artichoke heart salad. While the judges weren't too sure about it, at least on paper, here's how it turned out. Dono, chanterelles, and prosciutto, and a salad of baby artichoke hearts with capers. I mean, Joe was taking his sweet time to slice into the dish because he probably didn't want to destroy it. That's how immaculate it was. And what's inside of it? Layers of uh, bechamel with bechamel. prosciutto. Then I mixed in the chanterelles and the prosciutto. And when it was time to dish out the comments, the judges couldn't hold themselves back. Wow. <laughs> That's great. This is amazing. And, well, they simply couldn't stop singing its praises. It's like taking a trip to Italy. Great job. Beautiful. Yeah, it's just one of those times when the dish completely stole the show single-handedly. Speaking of, remember Fred? The magician? Well, he wasn't exactly a magician, but boy did he bring magic to his plate. I mean, just look at how gorgeous his creation here is. It was literally like a piece of art. What do you think? A black vinegar and ovaltine infused chocolate cake with matzo mascarpone cream. And I'm sure it took a ton of ingredients and a tremendous amount of effort to pull off a chocolate masterpiece on that scale. Now, fast forward to the taste test and let's see what the judges had to say about it. This is delicious. Serious. Thank you. This is all the superlatives you give dessert. Well, what do you know? The judges loved every last bite of it. This dish was pure artistry, and it's no surprise they were head over heels for it. No, but, it's, but it's also so smart because yeah. it's all those things, but it's not. And nope, they didn't stop at just a few compliments, oh no. They kept them coming one after the other. But just when you thought they were done, you want what Chef Ramsay did. He struggled with making decisions. <laughs> And I think that says it all right there. Yeah, he straight up licked the plate clean. Now, the closest Chef Ramsay has come to doing that is when Dustin presented the judges with a classic sausage roll. Listen to that noise. Would yeah. this be like a main course or if a hot dog? Oh, man, did you hear that? Just the sound of that crispy puff pastry was enough to get the judges excited. At first, there was a complete silence, but right after they took a dive for a second mouthful. Put some for the rest of us. <laughs> oh. Well, it looks like Chef Ramsay was once again on a mission to finish the plate all by himself. Well, I guess his actions speak louder than words. Chef Ramsay literally left nothing for the other judges to taste. What the delicious. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, no doubt. He totally earned the win. But is a video of impressive dishes ever complete without bringing up Reynolds poor Nomo? On you, my friend. Bring it up. Oh, yeah. That dude totally stole the show. This guy's a real genius. I mean, he always had a mind-blowing dish up his sleeve. But there is one masterpiece that stood out from the rest. When Reynolds stepped up and started explaining his dish to the judges, let me tell you, the list of ingredients sounded absolutely heavenly. Jasmine, gelato, coconut, and frozen ganache. Wow, could it get any better? Reynolds' ability to consistently elevate his dishes to new heights was a hallmark of his time on season 12. But it was white noise that really took the cake. By the way, that name's pretty cool, huh? Well, I'll tell you one thing. The flavors he packed into it definitely lived up to that name, that's for sure. And when they first opened it up, there was no holding back the wave of praise that was coming his way. It's almost a shame to ruin it. You know, it's on another level when the judges are feeling guilty about eating it. You know, the whole point of food? But hold on, it gets even better. Not only did it look like a work of art, but it tasted like one too. And Chef Ramsay was there. So if there was even the slightest problem with it, he'd definitely have made it known. It does taste as good as it looks. The judges were so impressed that they started clapping for him when they finished with their long list of compliments. I mean, it just feels right, right? Reynolds had completely knocked their socks off, so anything less would honestly feel like an insult. What's even more mind-blowing is that all of this went down in the beginning of the competition. Nobody saw it coming, and everybody else had a tough act to follow for sure. But that's what makes MasterChef so darn exciting. It's those moments of genius popping up where you least expect them. That's why I keep coming back to the show for sure. Well, although Reynolds didn't win the competition, he did manage to win a few hearts. 
I love how people know Reynold more than the actual winners. He's just the GOAT. People gushed about how he is still remembered more than the actual winners, and well, desserts or not, he's surely the GOAT. And well, there's more than one viewer to back this comment. The best dessert chef in entire MasterChef history. Period. Yep, he's considered to be the best dessert chef in the entire history of the show. And trust me when I say this. He earned the title. But now, let's think outside of desserts and dive straight into the pan sear arctic char. Mary Berg totally aced this challenge, and let me tell you this. When it comes to cooking, there's no stopping her. I mean, just listen to her describing the dish, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Pan seared arctic char with a blueberry red wine reduction and a carrot puree. Well, well, well. Looks like the chef's a bit unsure about the combo, huh? But how did Mary handle it? Well, you'll be surprised. I'm, an, I'm nervous, but I, I think it'll be good. Mary totally made it work. This dish was like a foodie dream come true. This is a pan seared arctic char with a blueberry wine reduction and- But here comes the million dollar question. Would it taste as good as it looked? Well, let's see what the judges have to say about it. It's fantastic. The compliments were pouring in, and well, she earned every bit of that applause in my book. You intensified those aromatic notes of the cassis. The now, I have talked about Christine and her perfectly crafted apple pie to death in my previous videos. But what happened in the second mystery box challenge was way more intriguing. So this time, guess what lay inside those boxes? Veal brains, lamb heart, bull's testicles, pig's kidney, cow's tongue, and a delicious lamb's head. Mm. While Christine felt glad she was spared the ghastly sight, she eventually made panko fried sweetbreads served with bok choy. A great accomplishment. Thank you so much, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. And yeah, it was a hit. However, Ryan turned out to be the winner this time. This meant Christine had to compete in the subsequent elimination challenge and Ryan smartly strategized to exploit all her weaknesses. He was in charge of choosing who could cook with a live crab and who would cook with canned meat. And Ryan spared no expense in trying to eliminate his strongest competitor. She might be a little bit thrown by working with the fresh crab, and I think it might be a little bit of a tougher ingredient for her. So I'm gonna give her fresh crab and the fresh crab. You're clever, Ryan. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Now, this was a cunning move, and I'm not the only one who thought so. In the Master Chef kitchen that's hoping for the canned crab. Monty stole my words when she said, gives a live crab to the blind chick. But in Christine's reaction video to that episode, she revealed she was actually cool with it and held no grudge against Ryan. Instead of getting all worked up, she actually appreciated it. Why? Because it showed that Ryan saw her as a real contender, someone to take seriously in the competition. And just like Ryan expected, Christine had some trouble with that crab, and at one point, it got her. Ouch. She even needed medical help in the aftermath. It pierced me. Medic. It's not too deep. Now, would you look at that evil grin on Ryan's face? However, the judges, understandably, were a tad worried. I mean, who wouldn't be, right? But guess what? When judgment came, Christine did what she did best. Every freaking time, like an angel. <laughs> Good job. Thank you, Seriously. Chef. Seriously. Yep, she knocked it out of the park. Are you really blind? <laughs> yes, Chef, I am. What color eyes have I got? I have no idea, Chef. I've been asking people here actually to describe all of you to me so I could figure out what you all look like. Chef Ramsay was straight up floored. I mean, he was in complete disbelief. It was a total game changer. Ryan, who probably thought he'd throw Christine off her game, ended up making Christine Knight unstoppable. Oh yeah, Christine's dish was so phenomenal that his strategy completely backfired. And then, in the breakfast challenge, we got a taste of her vocal leadership, and needless to say, the judges were impressed yet again. So vocal is extraordinary. She's taking control. More importantly, now there's great communication going right. on. You guys need to worry about that. Well, she surely led her team to victory. And like, I've climbed that entire ladder from bottom to top. Red team, congratulations. But hey, it's not always the best dishes that leave the judges speechless. Because when communication falls apart, teamwork crumbles, and above all, you got a seriously bad leader on top. Well, that's exactly what went down in Season 6, Episode 4, when the contestants dove into their first team challenge. Anyway, they were going to be dishing out hamburgers with onion rings and coleslaw alongside fish and chips to the hungry crowds at Knott's Berry Farm. But here's the twist, there was no set number of diners. Anyone walking through that gate had to be fed by both teams, who also had the privilege of voting for the winning dish. Dara took the reins of the blue team, but right from the start, they struggled to find their groove in the kitchen. What's shocking is that with just 10 minutes left on the clock, not a single portion of fish was cooked. Claudia, how many burgers have you got, mate? 45. 45. Who's on the fish? I am. How many portions have you got cooked, Katrina? None. None. Hey, blue team, 
There's no fish cup! Chef Ramsay's jaw literally hit the floor. He rallied the blue team, demanding they get their act together. He was so furious that he told Dara straight up to skip the challenge and head straight for the pressure test if that was more her thing. But then, Claudia swooped in like a savior to tackle the fish station. Yet, things quickly went south when the blue team was about to serve raw fish to a child. Can I have some fish? Stop! 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 The fish is raw. It's raw! It's raw! Yeah, talk about a close call. I guess not even Claudia was able to save the service. And obviously, Chef Ramsay's patience was pushed to the limits after staring down this train wreck of a service all day. Hey, blue team! I promise you now, I'll close this down. One more raw fish. But do you know what's worse? Naming a dish after yourself. Let me introduce you to Brian O'Brien. So nice they named him twice. But maybe shouldn't have named his dish thrice. Or, uh, something. Anyway, Ramsay and Tony couldn't help but exchange glances when the so-called Filet O'Brien was put in front of them. This is the Filet O'Brien. But in spite of that, Brian looked pretty proud of his eponymous Filet. But let me tell you, that pride was definitely misplaced. Because instead of being impressed, Tony couldn't resist taking a jab at Brian over it. So you've catapulted yourself with the great cooks of the world. Absolutely. The sarcasm was real. Chef Ramsay, meanwhile, found the whole situation absolutely hilarious. Stop, stop. Filet O'Brien. My name is Brian O'Brien. So you named it after yourself. I named it after... Anyway, when a scene straight out of Hell's Kitchen makes its way into MasterChef, it's only a matter of time before things get intense. And that's exactly what happened in this Season 8 episode, considering they had to feed a group of people about the size of a small country. And it wasn't too long when Chef Ramsay spotted a bowl filled with only center slices, and he couldn't figure what happened to the rest. And eventually, Jason sent him over the edge. We just wanted to have a nicer presentation, so we choose the uniform cuts that are in the middle. Chef Ramsay couldn't believe it. The dude had butchered the most expensive meat in the country beyond recognition for that. Yeah, Chef Ramsay got real pissed real quick. But you can't just trash that! It's not a chuck steak! I understand. So the contestants scrambled to fix the error before it was too late. To make things worse, the ends of the chunk of meat were still underdone, so you can imagine how raw the center portion was. It's the first slice and it's raw, what'd you do? Back. That's it! I am completely embarrassed. Well, that surely gotta hurt his image for the next few years to come, but hey, at least he didn't serve the judges their own heads on a platter. Yeah, I'm talking about the time when Audrey stepped up with a pretty nice or nasty surprise in store of the judges. Cakes. But they weren't just any old cakes. Next hopeful figured out how to get her cakes ahead in the competition. However, fortunately for Audrey, all she needed was an opening to get the judges' attention. And she definitely accomplished that. Look at Joe, he looks like a granddad. <laughs> and that wasn't the only thing she managed to accomplish. I actually found one picture on the internet wow. of you smiling. Bloody hell's about Still, while the judges were amused, they were also pretty perplexed, considering that those caricatures were more horrifying than inviting. And it didn't help that, by sticking them into the cakes, they completely disintegrated. <laughs> but in spite of the creepy caricatures, destroyed cakes, and a massive dose of plain old confusion, Audrey's creation was actually pretty spectacular. <laughs> Damn it, Graham just killed over his cake. Yeah, I know. I thought she was screwed as soon as her cake fell apart. But she actually walked away with an apron here. But not before even the narrator took a moment to get in on the action. Gordon bites his own head off. Man, I love this show. Prepared to be amazed as this next dish had the judges at a complete loss for words. When it comes to Joe, he and the trash are old friends. But there have also been a bunch of dishes that have left him speechless. Wow. Just like this time, when one contestant brought a whole new twist to the table. Now, get this, if you're gonna take part in a cooking competition, you should know that it takes more than just skill to impress the judges. It takes heart, creativity, and a magic touch to make an impression. And guess what, this contestant right here had it all. Yes, I'm talking about Sue, a food blogger from Houston, who was featured in Season 11. But here's the thing, Sue wasn't just a regular blogger. She was a passionate food lover with roots in Burma, a place where every meal tells a story of resilience and gratitude. Just like home, with a lot more cheering people. So when it was time to present her signature dish, she decided to present a tantalizing Burmese noodle soup with shrimp and coconut curry as a tribute to her homeland. When Chef Sanchez and Joe walked in to check over her station, Joe was already all in for Sue's dish. That looks amazing. Well, I think we've already got ourselves our winner. And no, it didn't stop and start at the dish, it was the passion for her country that won our hearts. 
I come from a third world country. We have to eat so that we can survive. So we are already grateful to have a bowl of rice every day where I came from. Sue was brimming with determination to bring some of the most exotic dishes to Master Chef, and the judges were soon to see that. Shall we taste? As the judges dug into Sue's creation, the room filled with anticipation. I have a thing yes, that sir. I say yes, not to too many people, which is food of love. And well, there was more appreciation yet to come her way. And this here, Sue, yes, chef. is food of love. Well done. Thank you, thank you very much, Chef. I'm very humbled. That must have been one of the biggest compliments anyone who calls himself a chef can receive. Even Sanchez couldn't help but praise her creation. That is truly something special. It means a lot to me, Chef. Now, when it came to Joe, one thing was clear. He was already sold. I made that much clear earlier. But when he actually started talking, there was no room for doubt. A profound immersion into Burmese cuisine. Thank you very much, Joe. This dish undoubtedly stood out as a true masterpiece, transcending cultural boundaries with its exceptional taste and execution. As for Chef Ramsay, well, he was just plain wholesome. It's the best dish I've tasted all night. As the praise poured in, Sue found herself standing there totally blown away, her eyes sparkling with joy and gratitude. Suddenly, it hit her. Her cooking wasn't just about making good food. 